this is the 2022 Indian Pursuit. Is this the best luxury touring motorcycle on the market? Well, we're gonna find out. Hey everybody, welcome to another Cruise Man's Motorcycle Review. Now to be clear, I did not purchase this motorcycle. It's on loan to me from Indian. And I want to thank Indian Motorcycles for allowing me to keep this motorcycle long enough to do a thorough review. But Indian is not sponsoring this video. No money has exchanged hands. They're not paying me to say wonderful things and they have not had any input into the content of this video. But this video does have a sponsor, and that is Cruise Man's Garage Maintenance Video Series for the Honda Goldwing. But more on that later. I don't plan to compare the pursuit to my Goldwing in this video. I know that many of you are anxious for me to compare this Indian pursuit to a Goldwing. But that's going to be in a separate video. So if you haven't done so already, please make sure you subscribe to this channel. It doesn't cost anything. Don't forget to click the notification bell so that YouTube will let you know when my comparison video is released. The Indian Pursuit is basically a fully loaded Indian Challenger. If you purchased a Challenger and then added all of the optional accessories from Indian, you'd end up with something pretty close to the Pursuit except you're going to probably end up spending a lot more money in the long run. You could think of this as the grand luxury touring version of the Challenger. Now those are my words, not Indians. The Pursuit is a big, heavy motorcycle. She weighs in at 877 pounds dry, 912 pounds fully fueled. Those of you out there with shorter end seams might appreciate the 26 and a half inch seat height. And the six gallon fuel tank should be enough to get you from one fuel stop to the next. The 108 cubic inch V-twin engine is mated to a six speed constant mesh transmission with a wet clutch and a belt drive to the rear wheel. This motorcycle features a frame mounted fairing and comes with a two year unlimited mileage warranty. Should you decide to take this Indian Pursuit on a road trip, you're going to have plenty of storage space. The trunk or the top box literally swallows a helmet, and getting a second helmet in is not going to be a problem, and you'll probably have some room to spare. It does take quite a bit of force to get the trunk lid to latch securely. But I think that's because of this rubber weather stripping along the rear of the trunk compressing when you close the lid. Indian has installed a sturdy chrome trunk rack, and this trunk lid feels strong enough to support a fair amount of weight on the rack. The top loading saddlebags are also very spacious and easy to access. Each of these saddlebags can easily hold my 16 inch MacBook Pro in its carrying case with plenty of room to spare. The saddlebags and trunk can all three be locked or unlocked using the spare key or the electronic key fob. The saddlebags and trunk have a combined capacity of 130.5 liters or 35.8 gallons. If you want to turn your pursuit into a bagger, you can remove the trunk by simply unplugging a couple of connectors and releasing a couple of latches and just lift it off. However, you may have to remove the saddlebags to access those latches. The saddlebags are easily removed with just two bolts and a connector. Now from the instructions I read, it appears that you could have the trunk off of the bike in under 10 minutes. So if you own a Pursuit or a Challenger, let me know in the comments section how long it takes you to remove the trunk on your bike and do you have to remove those saddlebags first. Indian has added even a little more storage in the front fairing and the included leg lower fairings. Each lower leg fairing also has a nice size cubby 
that can hold gloves, tools, etc. There are smaller cubbies on each side of the fairing to hold some smaller items. Now, the one on the right side has a USB cable for connecting a thumb drive or your smartphone. Unlike the trunk and saddlebags, none of these cubbies are lockable. So what you're hearing is a 1769cc Power Plus V-Twin with 11 to 1 compression ratio. The engine has four valves per cylinder with hydraulic lifters and produces 122 horsepower at 5500 RPM and 128 foot-pounds of torque at 3800 RPM. Trust me, if you choose not to purchase an Indian Pursuit, it's not going to be because of a lack of power. This is in the regular ride mode, not sport mode. Ready? You will not lack for power on this Indian Pursuit. Indian recommends premium unleaded fuel with up to 10% ethanol, of course. The engine has a red line of 6,500 RPM, a 108 millimeter bore and a 96.5 millimeter stroke. This liquid cooled engine does not apply as much heat to my inner thigh as other V-twins I've ridden in the past, but to be fair I did not sit and stop and grow traffic for extended periods of time on a hot summer day. So if you own one of these motorcycles and suffer from engine heat issues, please let us know in the comments down below. But engine heat was not an issue for me during my testing. To smooth out the bumps in the road, the Pursuit has been fitted with a front inverted fork with 5.1 inches of travel. The rear has a single shock with 4.5 inches of travel and electronically controlled adjuster. You can choose from some preload presets or you can fine tune the adjustment. Very, very nice. I found the suspension to be very compliant on surface streets and provided good handling during spirited highway riding. Now this is a road that I drive almost every day on my Goldwing and when I test ride motorcycles. And I have to say that this Indian Pursuit does a much better job of soaking up the bumps with this suspension than my Honda Goldwing does. In my around town riding, the Pursuit is the smoothest, most compliant ride I've tested so far. At slow parking lot speeds, the Pursuit feels a bit cumbersome and top heavy, but once you get it moving, she handles like a dream. On twisty roads, this motorcycle handles much better than a bike this size has any right to. I think you're going to be pleased with the handling on twisty roads. Okay, nobody behind me. Let's try it. Oh yeah. It's definitely got some very good brakes. That braking was accomplished with dual 320 millimeter or 12.6 inch front disc brakes with semi-floating rotors and four piston calipers. The front wheel is 19 by three and a half inch cast wrapped in a 13060 B19 Metzler Cruise Tech tire. The rear wheel is a 16 by five inch cast 
wrapped in a 18060 R1680H Metzler Cruise Tech tire. Wow, that's a mouthful. Now, both tires had good grip and handling during my testing. I did not have an opportunity to ride in the rain, so I'm not really sure how grippy they are on wet pavement. Now, hey, I'm just getting started with my review of this 2022 Indian Pursuit. I've still got to talk about the technology on the bike, comfort and convenience, the build quality, and of course, my final assessment. So now's a good time to remind you that this video would not be possible without our sponsor, Cruise Man's Garage Honda Goldwing Maintenance Videos. I realize that not all of you own a Honda Goldwing, but if you do, these videos can show you how to perform your own maintenance and save over $1,000 per year on dealer labor charges. Thousands of Goldwing owners in more than 23 countries are using these videos to help them maintain their own gold wings. There are videos for the 2001 through 2023 Honda Goldwing, and there are links in the description of this video if you're interested. Thank you, Cruise Man's Garage, for sponsoring this video. Man, I was kind of like thanking myself for sponsoring my own video. Okay, so let's get on with the review. The Indian Ride Command screen is the heart of Indian's technology for the pursuit, and it's one of the best infotainment systems I've ever seen. The 7-inch TFT touchscreen is bright enough to be seen on even the sunniest days in Texas, and there are day and night modes. You can set the screen to automatically switch between day and night modes based on the ambient light. But this feature is a bit sketchy. I would often ride several miles in the dark with the very bright day mode screen practically blinding me until it finally decides to switch to night mode. You can make just about any adjustment you need from this touchscreen interface, and the ability to swipe through the various screens has been very well thought out and implemented. The touchscreen is responsive even if you're wearing gloves, there is support for Apple CarPlay, but not Android Auto. Pairing my Cena 50S Bluetooth headset was seamless. I did not pair my iPhone using Bluetooth, but I did connect it to the USB cable in the right-hand fairing pocket. As I previously mentioned, it's unfortunate that this cell phone cubby cannot be locked, and there's no ventilation for your cell phone. Life is just going to be much better for everyone when motorcycle manufacturers build in wireless CarPlay. The Ride Command screens are also customizable. This is very cool. You can press this little settings button in the corner of a screen and you can drag and drop a variety of information, I guess you call them widgets, onto your screen. It's so cool. The built-in satellite navigation is one of the best I've seen. Visual and audible directions are logical and easy to follow with only a few glitches, which are kind of typical with any navigation system. Now, creating custom routes can be done right from the screen, or you can use the Ride Command website to create, save, and even share routes with other riders. The Ride Command website is hands down the best navigation route map system I've used. Creating a route with multiple waypoints is intuitive and fast. You can download the GPX file, copy to a thumb drive, and easily import that route to the motorcycle using that USB port in the cubby. To start the pursuit, you'll need to have this key fob in the vicinity of the motorcycle. The fob can also be used to lock and unlock the saddlebags and trunk. If the fob battery dies or is damaged, the electronics will still turn on the bike, but it won't start unless you enter a four-digit security code into the ride command screen, a much better integration than what the Goldwing has. Now, there are electrical connections on the trunk and the saddlebag, yet I couldn't see any warning lights on the dash if any of these are left open. Am I missing something here? I rode for nearly a week with the trunk unlatched and never saw a warning light on the dash. 
Many of the ride command screen functions can also be controlled from switches on the hand controls. Of the three touring bikes I have officially reviewed for this channel so far, the 2018 Goldwing, the BMW K1600 GTL, and this 2022 Indian Pursuit, I'm going to have to say that for someone six foot two like myself with a 33 inch inseam, the Pursuit is the most comfortable of the three, with some caveats, which I'll cover in a little bit. The seat is very cushy, and the suspension really soaks up those bumps on surface streets. Now, even though I'm not a floorboard guy, I have to admit that having the ability to move your feet around on a long distance ride can offer some really nice relief. The hand grips are pretty thick, and that long chrome handlebar gives good reach for relaxed riding position. The engine is smooth for a V-twin, much smoother than I was expecting. However, I did detect a little vibration in the hand grips at highway speeds. But sitting here at the stoplight at idle in first gear with the clutch pulled in, it's very, it's very smooth. It's not rattling my teeth or anything. I did not detect any vibration coming through those floorboards to my feet. The kickstand can be kind of hard to reach, even for someone like me with a 33-inch inseam. The electric windscreen was adequate for a 6'2 rider like myself. That big frame-mounted fairing provides excellent wind protection, as do those lower leg fairings. Now, there are some small air vents that can be opened in hot weather and closed in cold weather. There are air vents in the lower leg fairings as well. I found the vents to be a little difficult to open while you're riding, but I'm sure you longtime Indian riders have adapted to this and figured out a way to do it. I'm not a big fan of having the mirrors on the handlebars. I would much prefer them be fixed to the fairing. And I found them to be a little small. The battery tender heated gear SAE connector on the dash is brilliant. However, it's running through a 10 amp circuit and I'm not sure that that's enough power for heated riding gear. My press bike came with a blown fuse on this circuit which I replaced. One comfort feature I really liked was the ability to open and close the saddlebag lids while sitting on the bike. This is handy if you go through the drive through at McDonald's and you want to stuff your Big Mac and fries into the saddlebag without having to get off the bike to open them. The hand controls are nicely positioned and it only took me a day of riding to obtain some muscle memory of where the various switches are located. All of the switches can easily be operated with gloves and easily reached, even if you have small hands like I do. The left side hand control has the horn, the high beam switch, and the flash to pass switch. Unlike some V-twin motorcycles, Indian offers only one turn signal switch, thank God. Underneath that, you'll find the audio control joystick, and next to that, a screen select switch. On the right-hand control, you'll find the power switch, the engine stop and start switch, the cruise control switch, and the electronic windscreen switch. Each hand control also has a little toggle switch on the front of the control, or is it the back of the control? Well, they face forward, so I'm calling it the front of the control. The right-hand toggle switch can navigate through menus or accept dialogues while the left toggle lets you back out of those menus or decline dialogues or hang up a phone call. After a couple hours in the saddle, that relaxed riding position kind of takes a toll on my lower back. The seat itself is not the problem. It's just the riding position that it puts me in, and this is going to be different for every rider. I'm thinking that the low seat and the floorboards had my long legs uh, may just not be a good combination. Plus, I have a pretty weak lower back anyway. I would have thought that a $33,000 touring bike would have a reverse gear, but there is none to be found. Also, no hill start assist. Bummer on both counts. The single LED headlight is adequate. That's all I'm going to say. I was surprised that the hand controls are not backlit. 
The tail lights and brake lights are very low on the saddlebags and not very large. But they did include a Cyclops brake light on the trunk lid, which is a nice safety touch. The Pursuit also comes with included fog lights, which offers some additional lighting of the road and makes you more visible to oncoming traffic. The front turn signals are integrated into the fairing for a very modern look, but the rear are kind of the old school design. I like that if you press and hold the turn signal switch while changing lanes and traffic, the turn signals will go out as soon as you release the switch. Now, if you simply press the turn signal switch and release, they go out after you've completed your turn or after so many seconds. I didn't take the time to, to time them. It's a very, very well thought out design. When we come back from this short break, I'm going to tell you what I think about the build quality of this 2022 Indian Pursuit. Now, build quality is sort of a mixed bag. The bike feels very solid when you're riding it. I didn't notice any rattles or loose parts. The trunk and saddlebags feel very sturdy and well-constructed, as does that front fairing. There is a nice felt-like liner in the trunk, but mine was loose at the rear of the trunk, or I guess it's the front of the trunk, and I couldn't see any way to reattach it. I also saw another YouTube video showing a pursuit, and it had the exact same issue. Is this just a poor design? I was surprised that there were no liners in the saddlebags, but perhaps this is so they can maximize storage space. And then there's the issue with the paint. As you may or may not know, when this press bike arrived, it had 700 miles on it, which I presume were from another journalist. The gas tank was very scratched up, had a lot of marring, and we assume it came from the shipping company maybe placing a box or something on top of the bike during transport. I spent the better part of a day polishing out the paint to bring it back to as close a showroom quality as possible with my skills. However, even without the damage to the paint, there appear to be some inconsistencies in the paint quality. The paint on the saddlebag lids, for example, looks like it was cut and buffed at the factory. Very nice. While the paint on the saddlebags themselves seems to have a lot of orange peel and looks kind of dull by comparison. I also noticed one little spot on the gas tank looks like it might have undergone some repair at the factory before it was sent out the door. However, most people, I promise you, would never even notice this. It appears that the clear coat on this motorcycle is relatively soft and can scratch or mar easily. So I would recommend some protective paint film on the rear of the gas tank to prevent scratches from your jacket or accidentally dragging a boot across the paint when getting on or off the motorcycle. All of the chrome on the motorcycle looks to be very high quality. So this is the part of the review where I score the motorcycle on a scale from 1 to 5 in 8 different categories, with 5 being the best score and 1 being the worst. The styling of the Indian Pursuit is kind of a blend of classic V-twin and the modern. The big frame mounted fairing is definitely a nod toward the modern look, while the saddlebags and trunk have a more traditional V-twin style. And of course, that massive V-twin engine slathered in chrome bits really sets off the look of the Pursuit. I'm going to give the Pursuit 4 out of 5 for styling. If I were in the market for a V-twin touring bike, this is what I would want it to look like. The 1.8 liter V-twin is a beast, and it will not disappoint you when you crack open the throttle. The Indian Pursuit Limited with black, Metallic gets a performance rating of 4.5 out of 5. Now I'm giving the 2022 Indian Pursuit a 4.3 out of 5 for comfort based on that compliant suspension, the great wind protection, and that nice comfortable seat. The floorboards are nice too. This bike handles much better than you would expect an 877 pound bike to handle. 
stiffen up the suspension settings, and you won't have any trouble on twisty roads. I'm giving the Indian Pursuit 4 out of 5 for handling. The Pursuit has all the tech you need and most of the tech you want. I love that ride command screen and the ability to control everything from the touch screen or from the hand controls. I'm giving the Pursuit 4.5 out of 5 for tech. Now changing the oil and filter is going to be easy. The manual is also packed with maintenance instructions, so Indian obviously assumes that owners are going to be performing much of their own maintenance. They also have maintenance instruction videos on YouTube. However, the lack of a center stand and an air filter buried under the gas tank is going to make some maintenance tasks a challenge. And the battery location behind that front fender makes accessing the battery pretty tedious. My rating, with five being a piece of cake to work on and one being a piece of something else to work on, I'm going to give the Indian Pursuit a rating of 2.4 out of 5. With an MSRP of just $1 shy of $33,000, this Indian Pursuit Limited with Premium Package Black Metallic is one of the most expensive motorcycles I've reviewed today. But to be clear, this is a lot of motorcycle with a lot of performance, comfort, and tech. Nevertheless, for that price, I'm giving the Pursuit a value rating of 3 out of 5. So what is my overall rating and thoughts on this 2022 Indian Pursuit? Well, first of all, you have to understand I am a Goldwing guy. It's the only touring bike I've ever owned. So I, I do tend to be a little biased toward the brand. And riding this Indian Pursuit for a few weeks has made me rethink that position. Maybe I need to uh, take a broader look at what's available out there because I've got to tell you, I was very, very impressed with this motorcycle. It has all of the tech that I've been wanting for the last 15 years. It's pretty much got the tech side down. Uh, it's got great performance. It's got it's just got a lot of things going in its favor. So I'm going to give this motorcycle my rating of 4.5 out of 5. If I was in the market for a V-twin motorcycle, there is no question in my mind this would be the first one I would consider. Also, if Honda decided tomorrow they're going to quit making the Goldwing, this would be at the very top of the list of alternative motorcycles for me to fit my needs. So that's how impressed I was with the Indian Pursuit. It's not perfect. I haven't found a motorcycle yet that is, but it's pretty damn good. So 4.5 out of 5. Now, I think it's only fair that since I have the opportunity to have you hear from an actual Indian owner, somebody who has owned a couple of different Indian motorcycles, uh, that I let you do that. Now, Don Smith, a friend of mine, many of you have seen Don in some of my videos. He actually owned a couple of Indians. He owned some Harleys, too. Let's hear what he had to say about his experience with Indian. I've owned seven or eight motorcycles in the last seven years when my little sister got me riding again. I went through four Harleys and hated every one of them. One of them, brand new, 250 miles on it, and it's ECU fried in the middle of a busy intersection as, li as if a, an invisible hand came out of the sky and just turned the ignition off. I decided to try an Indian and I bought a 2017 Indian Vintage. I got more compliments on that Vintage than any motorcycle I ever owned. Love that Vintage, but when they came out with the uh, Chieftain uh, for 2018, I bought this beautiful blue Chieftain. Love that bike, and there's many things I love about the Indian. But if I ever wanted to go back to a V-Twin, it would be an Indian. So that's my review of the 2022 Indian Pursuit Limited with the premium package. If you have any questions or comments about my time on the Pursuit, please do not hesitate to put them in the content section. And don't forget to watch for my upcoming comparison, side by side, head to head, of this Pursuit to my 2018 Honda Goldwing. 
And if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button because that will really help out this channel with YouTube. Until next time, remember, ride often, but always ride safe.